Hi LEGO fans, it's minifigure time again and these are my favourite videos to film. This time we've got 20 new characters from the LEGO Movie 2. In this video I'm going to open up a complete set of 20, show you the minifigures inside and teach you my system for feeling what's inside LEGO minifigure blind bags. The 20 minifigures to collect in no particular order are as follows. Awesome Remix Emmett, Battle Ready Lucy, Apocalypseburg Benny, Giraffe Guy, Crayon Girl, Sherry Scratchin Post and Scarfield, Hula Lula, Watermelon Dude, Flashback Lucy, The Swamp Creature, Candy Wrapper, Gone Golfin President Business, Apocalypseburg Abe, Vest Friend Rex, Kitty Pop, Dorothy Gale and Toto, Cowardly Lion, Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Unikitty. We all know duplicates suck, so I'm going to teach you how to feel out every minifigure from the LEGO Movie 2. And the good news this time is that LEGO's made this super easy for us. With the LEGO Movie 2 minifigures, each box contains three rows of 20, and it's rumoured that each one of those rows of 20 contains a complete set. I am going to be feeling these out completely blind so I can show you the system. I've basically taken all 42 of them and really mixed them up. But honestly, the good news is that these characters are very, very different, and it's really not going to take a lot of skill to feel them out this time. What you will have to watch out for is the four characters from The Wizard of Oz. I've seen a lot of adult fans going crazy over these in the forums. So a lot of people are likely to be going out filling out the bags and buying just those. And if you are one of those people, stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to do it. This time around you're going to notice that the blind bags have gotten a lot bigger. For comparison, the one on the right is a Percival Graves from the Harry Potter series. I've got a couple of theories here. Firstly, the plastic on the new bags might be more resistant to tearing when people are feeling the bags. But I figure the real reason is to stop idiots like me cutting open the bags and slicing the capes. Many of the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts characters had fabric capes, and me being a complete doofus, I sliced into the bags and sliced into some of the capes. This larger sized bag should help to prevent that from happening. If you are planning to feel out specific characters, it's a good idea to go prepared. I always have some kind of checklist so I can tick off the ones I've found. And the most important thing is to have a picture of every one of the characters complete with their accessories. It's the accessories which are really going to help you here. Some of these characters are very unique and you will know them immediately. Others take a little bit more detective work. Taking the example of Dorothy, once you've felt out Toto, you can confirm the find by feeling out the hairpiece. You'll usually find a couple of distinctive things on each character. OK, that's enough of me talking, let's open up some bags. I'm going to feel out each one of these bags as quickly as I can and explain what I'm doing. I'm then going to open it up to prove what's inside and then we'll take a brief look at the minifigure. Because I've got 42 of these, I'm going to find some duplicates along the way. For your sanity and mine, I'm just going to cut those out in the edit process. So what you're going to see right now is me feeling out and opening all 20 LEGO Movie 2 minifigures. Enjoy! OK, so this is bag one and a couple of notes before we get started. Always give these bags a shake, make sure there's no Lego in the top there because I'm going to make a small cut and we don't want to harm anything inside. I'm going to put a picture of the minifigure that I'm feeling out in this top right hand corner here. That's going to go on in post production and it doesn't mean I know what I'm feeling. The other important notice is in the description for this video, you're going to find a link to every feeling guide. So if you want to find a specific minifigure or refer back to another part of the video, just go to the description and click the link. Okay, let's get feeling this bag. So in the bottom here, I've got a torso. That's pretty standard. I've got a head. That's not going to help. Uh, what? Oh, right. Okay. Now, I've got something here which has definitely got four legs. This is a Lego animal, no question. Now, this is either going to be Dorothy's dog or it's going to be Sherry's scratch and post's cat. Now, I do have a long tail. Now, just looking down at my notes, I can see that Toto doesn't have a long tail. So I'm pretty confident this is going to be Sherry scratching post and Scarfield. So what I'm going to do now is just make that small incision, hopefully not damage anything inside, and we'll see if we can prove it. Actually, this a <laughs> little bit more difficult than I thought. Let's do that again, and then we can get to the contents. So this is definitely the minifigure I was looking for. The first thing you're going to notice is we're getting white base plates this time. That is a new colour, that's really cool. You'll also get one of these instruction booklets and this is actually taped shut. Now you could open this up and use this as your checklist. I'm probably just going to toss that to one side. And then of course we've got various things we can feel out. Firstly we've got Scarfield here, we've got this four-legged animal with a long tail. You can also feel out the Mohican which is very cool. Uh, I guess you could confirm this by feeling out the hair. 
So this is Sherry scratching post in her Apocalypseburg gear. Most of the characters in Apocalypseburg are dressed up for this kind of dystopian world. And as you can see here, she's got lots of metallics on her. Looks very ready for battle. Really nice metallic printing on the front there. I love the cat, which is obviously a reference to Sherry scratching post's love of cats. Really nice hairpiece. I love this great wavy hair. She does have some, uh, I guess, bands around her arm with some really nice metallic printing and the same on the other side. We also have some side printing on the legs there with more metallics. She's got these really cool boots on. And what do we have around the back? No alternate expression, but we do get a little bit of detailing on the back there, including this metal belt and a really cool facial expression. I love that band she's wearing around the top of her head. And this is Scarfield, probably the easiest thing to feel out in this bag. Just take a look at that facial print with the snarling teeth, it's awesome. Obviously an Apocalypseburg version of the cat with that big red Mohican, but really nicely printed, lots of detail here. I like the collar with the studs on, that just looks so cool. Moving on to bag two, let's see what we've got here. Nicely smoothed out. Oh, really big element here. Let me just see if I can show you that. Yeah, very, very big element, uh, kind of tubular in shape. So I'm thinking this could be one of two characters. We've got the crayon guy or the, no, actually it's a crayon girl, or we've got the giraffe guy, but I'm feeling ears on this. So I'm thinking it's gonna be the giraffe guy. I don't think we've got anything else to confirm that necessarily in this bag. Oh, in fact, he does have a plant. You know what? I'm so confident that's giraffe guy. Let's open this up and see what we've got inside. I'm gonna cut all the way across the top because that just does make it a little bit easier. Uh, and yes, it's the giraffe guy. Here's everything we got inside the bag and this is the obvious thing you're gonna wanna feel out. We've got this massive piece of headgear here for the giraffe and a place there for the minifigure's head to stick through. This is really rather distinctive. Feels very different to, I guess, what the crayon is gonna feel like. Really nice ridge down the hair there. Let's put him together and take a look at how he looks. So here is Giraffe Guy and he's super tall. I'm kind of worried about him fitting in my minifigure display case, but uh, let's take a look anyway. He's holding this plant element here, which I think could be a new element. I don't think I've seen that before, but really, really nice. And you do get two of those in the bag, which is super cool. Really nice print here. We've got these dual molded yellow and brown legs with this giraffe print on the side, on the front, and then it's running all the way up the torso here. Similar printing on the back, I guess, yep. And as you can see here, we've got a different expression with this kind of little smirk and then a big beaming smile on the front. Obviously, we've seen this uh, giraffe thing here. That kind of just sits on top of the head like that. And it's a really, really cool giraffe figure. Bag number three and so far no duplicates. So let's see what we've got here. I can feel the leaflet inside. That's no good to us. Uh, ah, that's something thin. Let's try and push that into a different area of the bag so we can have a feel. Uh, doesn't really want to move about. Now that's interesting, that's kind of thin and very pliant. That feels like a whip element, and there is a character with one of those. I think there's only one character with it, and that's going to be the uh, the swamp guy, who is a very cool thing. Um, yeah, that has to be the swamp creature. And there's the head, I can feel it, it's very, uh, very lumpy. Got some fins down the side. Yeah, this is going to be swamp creature. I'm gonna give that a good shake to make sure I don't cut anything. And then we'll just cut across the top here and get inside. And hopefully we'll see a big flash of green. Oh, ah, now that's interesting. Now I've heard that some of these have an inner bag and this guy does. So some of the pieces are contained in an inner bag for some reason. I guess this might just be because of the difference in uh, materials used in these uh, bags. So this is outside of the bag and the hard pieces are inside. But anyway, let's take a look at him built. Here's a swamp creature and he is dressed Apocalypseburg style. They all go a bit mean and gnarly in Apocalypseburg and he's dressed accordingly. He's got a tattoo on his chest there of a Lego skull and then he's dressed in these kind of shorts with some Apocalypseburg style gear. We've got these kind of metal elements. Um, 
We have dual molded legs, no side printing, but some really cool printing there on the front with the metallics. Also got these uh, suspenders holding up his shorts. And around the back, we've got more uh, printing for the suspenders and then a buckle on the back there. Now this headpiece is a little bit flat. It looks a little bit odd in just this green color. I'd expect to see some kind of printing, but it is a super nice mold. And speaking of super nice, check out this facial print. His eyes are huge and uh, only partially show through that mask but really really nice printing there only one facial expression and then it's just kind of sits down over the eyes and then finally we've got the whip and this is honestly the easiest thing to feel out in the bag so feel out for the whip and then confirm it by feeling out for the headpiece bag number four and so far so good with no duplicates so let's just have a feel around in here see what we can find uh, the leaflets no good there's a rather chunky piece of headgear Okay, that's a minifigure head, base plate. Let's see if we can find something distinctive. There's something small down here. Often these give it away. So we have, oh, I know that element. Anyway, it's tiny. It's a pair of Lego uh, binoculars or binoculars. And uh, this is going to be Battle Ready Lucy. So yeah, I'm very, very confident that that's the only figure that has one of those. Like I said, it's always good to do your research first. And this is, you know, dropped a piece, but yeah, that is definitely Lucy. And the part that I was feeling for just then was these binoculars. The other thing you can be feeling out for is this rather distinctive headgear. It's very chunky and we've got kind of these red goggles sticking out. So here is Battle Ready Lucy, aka Wild Style, and a very cool looking minifigure. I really like that headgear. We of course have the binoculars, which are a very common Lego element, but make it really easy to feel out. The legs are dual molded from brown and black plastic. And then let's have a look. We do have some printing on the side there with the pouch, and then a little bit of decoration on the front there, including some metallics. And then Wild Style is wearing a typical, uh, I guess, hoodie top here. Um, obviously, this very cool headpiece but let's take a look at that mean expression underneath yep teeth bared and on the other side very much more friendly that's very cool and I guess the only other thing to point out here is the printing on the arms which is uh, the signature blue and purple color a little bit on the cuffs there and of course she does have this quiver in the movie you will see her with a crossbow bag five and still no duplicate so let's see what we've got here uh, I will give this a shake because we've got elements at the top. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay, straight away, this is Unikitty. There is a kind of arched piece here. That is only one character. Only Unikitty can have that. I'm not sure we need another Unikitty after the Unikitty collectible minifigures. Yeah, I've got some studs here. This is definitely going to be a flash of pink and blue because we have the only Unikitty in the set. Adjusting the exposure slightly on the camera, you can see the element I was referring to. Really, really easy to feel out. And in fact, if you feel anything like uh, small studs like this, it's probably going to be Unikitty. But this really does confirm it. So this is Unikitty and she comes with a whole bunch of spare parts. Now I noticed with Unikitty, she's gone back to the old construction. With the Unikitty uh, collectibles that we recently had, there was an upside down piece that went on the bottom there. We usually got a print for the eyebrows, but this is a very standard Unikitty made from very standard parts, which is quite interesting to see Lego going backwards on that. Uh, she is pretty much a bog standard Unikitty with the possible exception of those rather wide eyes. Bag six was another Sherry Scratch and Post and Scarfield, so we're moving along to bag number seven. We've got actually a squidgy headpiece stuck up here. That's interesting because it's, it's kind of that soft plastic and it adheres to the outer bag, so there's definitely no inner bag, or is there? Let's see what else we can find in here. We've got a base plate, got the leaflet, and then torso piece, head. We need something distinctive. Ah, right. Okay, we've got a four-legged creature, so this is probably not going to be another Sherry Scratching Post. I can feel a short, pointy tail. This is going to be Dorothy, Gale, and Toto. And this is one that I'm super excited to see, so let's check this out. Make sure we've got the right thing. Oh, now, alert, alert. We do have a cape in here. You've got to be really careful not to cut these like uh, I sometimes do. And then all of the pieces here, let's just adjust the brightness slightly. As you can see, all of the hard pieces are actually bunched together in one bag. I'm going to get them out of there so we can see them better. 
I'll get you and that little dog too. Speaking of little dogs, this is Toto. He is pretty easy to feel out in the bag. You're feeling for something which is kind of flat with four legs, and then you can feel that tail. That is the giveaway because uh, Sherry Scratchin's Scarfield has a curly tail. This guy has little ears and really, really cool dog. Uh, this is obviously a special mold for Toto. Really nicely printed there with the little eyes with a little detail in there for the light. Some nice shading on the side here, the uh, detail for the fur. And that's a super nice Toto dog figure. I don't know about over the rainbow, but I'm certainly over the moon with this Dorothy. This is an awesome minifigure. Now the fabric is kind of uh, papery and it doesn't really match, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, it does complete the character pretty well. We have, let's see, we've got dual molded legs here with the white and the blue, and then some printed detail on there. Oh, look at that. She's got ruby slippers on. That is so cool. Uh, yeah, we've got some red printing with some gold metallics on top. That is really really nice uh, now this hair piece is squidgy it's very uh, pliable and you can feel it uh, kind of sticking inside the bag uh, really really nice though i love that the way the uh, ponytails or the pigtails come around in front and then we've got those bows which are picked out in blue really nice torso printing i like the blue plaid pinafore dress and then the blouse underneath and it's almost the same on the back so you've got to be careful to put the uh, torso on the right way around but this is a really nice minifigure and i can see why the adult fans of lego are going crazy trying to find these so let's see what we've got inside bag number eight we're all clear at the top let's see what we've got at the bottom we've got a torso piece uh, there's a head there and then some legs okay that's not very helpful what have we got here? So, ooh, that's an interesting shaped element. So this looks like a stud, but it's not. It's actually heart shaped. I know this is gonna be the Tin Man. Yeah, we've got an ax there. I just wanna feel the head. There should be a conical. Yeah, there it is. There's, there's kind of conical head. Yeah, this is gonna be Tin Man. I'm just gonna carefully snip along the top here. Did I get in? Yes, I did. Let's uh, see what we've got inside. It should be a flash of gray for Tin Man. Yet yeah, loads of actually silver elements. That's really, really cool. So this is what I found inside the bag first. We've actually got two of these and these are heart shaped Lego elements, which I don't think we've ever seen before. And those also come with some really nice printing on there of a clock. So here's Tin Man, and he's a really awesome minifigure. As you can see here, he's actually made out of metallic plastic, which is really, really nice. The only disappointment is this axe. It's kind of a standard Lego axe, and it's made out of the kind of dull gray. It would have been nice to have got that in a metallic to match the minifigure. But we've also got the heart there, which we've seen already. Uh, Really nice printing though there. Little bit of metallic detail around the clock face, and great to get a heart-shaped stud. Again, really, really nice printing on this minifigure. I think it's gonna be the standard for all of these minifigures in the set. We've got some arm printing there with the rivets. Also printing on the other side, I guess just showing the joints for the elbow. Then we've got some almost like tarnishing down here. Obviously, Tin Man was stuck in a field for a long time and uh, he's gonna pick up that sort of thing. More riveting on the side. Then we've got the side printing on the legs, which is really nice. And then printing down the front here on the torso. We also get three of these bow tie pieces. I've just got one on here, obviously. And then a metallic minifigure head. That is so cool. And then overlaid with the metallic metallic and black printing. And then we've got this cone element, or I guess a funnel element that sits at this really nice jaunty angle around the back. Yeah, just a little bit of detailing there for the tarnishing, but that is a tin man and he's totally awesome. Bag nine was another giraffe guy, so we're moving straight onto bag 10, clear at the top. Ah, and there's a big piece in here. Big, big wide piece. Also in the shape of a wedge. This is gonna be the watermelon guy. Super easy to feel out. In fact, crazy easy to feel out. We should get a large piece of watermelon in here. Yeah, there we go. That is the piece you're feeling for. It's really, really big, really wedgy. And uh, yeah, no problem finding this guy. 
So this is Watermelon Guy or Watermelon Dude to give him his official name as per LEGO's website. He's carrying a small piece of watermelon here. Uh, cannibalistic I would say. We actually get two of these in the set. It's nice to get a spare part. And then we've got this large watermelon piece on top. I believe this is dual molded plastic. We've got this pink plastic, then a little bit of green at the top, and then some printing there for the white and for the seeds. And this sits on top of the head like so. We've got a really cool expression on the front there with the sunglasses and then around the back he's without his shades and then underneath we've got a kind of monochrome torso piece here with these dual molded arms which looks really nice and then down at the bottom we've got some dual molded legs with some simple printing on the sides or as I should more rightly say on the front I don't know what those do but they do add a little bit of decoration and that is a very cool but uh, certainly not main character watermelon dude Ironically, bag number 11 was another watermelon dude, so we're moving on to bag number 12. Let's see what we have here. So we've got a pair of pants. Is that another whip? Could it be the swamp creature? No, actually, that's um, kind of plain. It feels like a tail. We've got a headpiece there. Now I'm wondering whether this could be the cowardly lion. Now the cowardly lion does have a big headpiece, and I can feel one of those in there. But I'm feeling for a 1x2 tile because that would really confirm it for me. Uh, yeah, there's a 1x2 tile. This is going to be the cowardly lion. Just make sure we're not going to cut anything. I'm going to carefully along the top. And we should have a brown character inside. And I've really hashed this up. Hang on. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Yes, it is the Cowardly Lion. This is the one by two piece I was feeling for. Uh, and this is the head piece. So here's the Cowardly Lion, and I've got to say these Wizard of Oz minifigures are simply stunning. I can see why people are going after these. He does of course have this medal which uh, awards him courage, uh, which is well needed. And then we've got this tail. Now this is what I was initially feeling out in the bag. You can see it's very pliant, only has a thin piece there between the body and the legs. And um, that's a very good thing to feel out and then to confirm with the 1x2 and with the large headpiece. That headpiece is simply stunning, I love that. No printing really needed, it's just super textured. And then we've got a slightly odd coloured head underneath. It doesn't quite fit with the body, uh, but yeah, two different expressions, slightly smiling there, and then looking a little bit more like the Cowardly Lion, a little bit less sure of himself. The printing on here is pretty simple, got a nice kind of brownie biscuit colour of the actual plastic and then just some detailing there for the fur. Similarly down here we've got the claws, no printing on the sides and it's just really simple but really really nice cowardly line minifigure. Next we have bag number 13 and let's see what we've got here. So okay that's interesting. Um, now that feels like hair and I think the head might be stuck inside. Now that can sometimes be quite tricky, uh, but I felt that many times before with different series. Um, got a base plate, then what is this? Okay, so we've got some kind of, ah, there we go. So we've got a two by, is that a two by three tile? Now, yeah, I know this is gonna be, this is gonna be Throwback Lucy or Flashback Lucy, I think her name is because she is carrying a like gold disc plaque. Let's see what else we can find. Yeah, there's also a microphone in here, but I think three of the characters have a microphone. So let's open this up and confirm what we suspect. This is gonna be flash, flash, flashlight, not flashlight, it's gonna be flashback Lucy. So this is the main thing I was feeling out in the bag. This is a two by three tile, really nicely printed. Now this is actually a gold disc for everything is awesome. Now I'm trying not to give you any spoilers here, but there is a really uh, interesting moment at the end of the movie, which uh, I'm not gonna tell you about, but uh, let's just say Lucy is clutching this gold disc for everything is awesome. Honestly, guys, I'm trying not to give away any spoilers, but there is so much backstory here, it's unreal. Lucy looks incredible. She's wearing this kind of stage outfit here with bubbles all over it. Uh, she has these dual molded legs with more bubbles on the side there, and then bubbles on the front, really nicely printed. Uh, again, around the back there, you can just see the, uh, 
metallics. And then she's got this crazy wild hairstyle, uh, wild style hairstyle, which is super cool. I really like that. I know all about this from the movie, but if you've not seen it yet, I'm not going to explain it. She's clutching a gold disc for everything is awesome. And let's take a look at those expressions. She does, of course, have a microphone. Really nice to see it in that pink colour with the metal or I guess a metallic paint on top. She's got this singing face and then around the back she's got her kind of trademark smile but that is flashback Lucy, that is super cool. Next we have bag 14, we're clear at the top. What have we got in here? So we've got a base plate, we've got some legs, yeah we, you can always feel those because they move unless they're little Harry Potter legs. Got a, yeah that's a leaflet, head, ah now that's more interesting. What is that? Let's give everything a shake, get it out of the way. Now that is, yeah, that's a conical hat. That can only be one thing. This is gonna be the, I think the final Wizard of Oz character. This is gonna be the Scarecrow. Get rid of that leaflet and Yes, there he is. So two things you should be looking for here is the Scarecrow's hat, which is very distinctive. And then also there is a two by two tile. But if you find that hat, you've really nailed it. So here's the Scarecrow. And as the story goes in The Wizard of Oz, this guy doesn't have a brain. But here he has a certificate of achievement proving that he's really smart. So uh, yeah, that solves that. Then we've got this hat, which is a really nice piece that is jewel molded. So we've got this kind of um, you know, lighter brownish orange plastic on the outside there for the, uh, I guess the ribbon around the top of the hat. Really nice printing on the legs here, but really simple. These dark brown legs and then just some, some patches here for the, uh, the legs or the, uh, the trousers which have been patched before they were put on the scarecrow. And then you can see the torso piece here with the, the rope tied around the neck holding the head on and then the rope for a belt which really nicely comes down over the pants. Turning him over, we've got another rip on the back there, the other side of the rope. And then you can just see a ruffle at the back there. And then we have this rather simple facial expression. Um, yeah, it does look very kindly, looks almost a little bit um, Looks almost a little bit like wood, but um, yeah, really nice facial expression. And that is our Scarecrow. Next we have bag number 15, and so far we're doing really well at not getting duplicates. Um, oh, right, okay, straight into this. I can feel we've got a very, very large element. Let's see if I can show you that. I mean, that is huge. That is the Crayon Girl, no question about it. Let's open this up and show you exactly what I mean. But there's a very large piece in there with a conical top for the end of the crayon, and you can't mistake that. Let's get this out, and hang on, still got more pieces. Yeah, we've got a head in there somewhere. Oh, I'll go back for that. In fact, oh, that, that's interesting. What I've actually managed to do is cut the top off the inner bag. But anyway, back to the point. This is the piece you want to feel for. This is the top of the crayon. This makes it a very, very easy find. So clearly Crayon Girl is a very distinctive minifigure. You're going to find this really easy to feel out. Well, we've got this large piece here. It's almost like the uh, rocket we got in the party series. Uh, but that just sits over the body and the head and snaps onto the top of the minifigure's head. In her hand here we have a little self-portrait. That's a really cool 2x2 two two printed tile. And then underneath it's pretty vanilla. We've got this kind of lilac plastic here but we do have some dual moulding there on the feet with the darker purple and we've got the darker purple hands. Really nice friendly facial expression there. Looks a little bit unsure of herself. Now around the other side Wow, I don't know what's going on there, but she's squinting for some reason. And um, yeah, that's, uh, I don't remember this girl. She might have been running around in the background of the Lego Movie too. But um, yeah, really cool and distinctive minifig. Bag 16 was yet another watermelon dude. I'm getting a little bit worried. Although I did buy 42, so I should have two full sets and a couple of random extras. Now this guy, what have we got in here? Okay, some kind of head. Oh, uh, right, okay. That's uh, Apocalypse Benny. There's a space helmet in there. I'm guessing that, yeah, you can also feel a bit of a ridge on it. I mean, Benny's helmet is very distinctive. It's broken. I really don't need to go any further. So I'm gonna just uh, see if we can make a careful cut in the top here. And we should see some blue, I guess, for Benny. Uh, yeah, that is Apocalypse Benny. You can see the space helmet there, which is super easy to feel out. 
And here is Apocalypse Benny. Now, I don't think this was ever explained in the movie, but at one point or another, he lost his arm, and it's been replaced with this thing that looks a little bit like a lightsaber handle. It is a proper arm piece, molded custom for Benny, and then you've got one of these elements which you push into the end there. Um, yeah, I can't remember how he lost it. I don't think it was ever explained, but probably some child tearing it off. We've got the plain blue legs, and the classic space logo with the distressed version, and then we've got this really cool tool toolbox uh, with the classic Lego space logo on. That's a really, really nice element. I love that. Um, the air tank on the back there, which is pretty standard to Benny. And then we've got one of these standard Benny helmets with the I guess a lip at the bottom here, which looks like it's been broken, but it's actually a molded piece. Really nice Benny facial expression there. And on the other side, that is new. I'm pretty sure we've never seen a Benny with that expression before. We don't often see him not smiling, but this is a really cool version of Benny. I love that uh, arm that's kind of just popped onto the side there. Bag number 18, and who do we have here? So, base plate, we've got... Oh, okay. So we've got a, a kind of round pole here with nothing attached to it. That is probably going to be Apocalypseburg Abe. As you can see here on the front, he's got an axe with uh, a pole. And then there we go. Large piece of headgear here. Feels like a top hat. And I'm guessing the hair is going to be molded into the hat element. So let's give that a good shake down. This is gonna be Apocalypseburg Abe. Really cool looking minifigure if he's anything like the one in the movie. And so I'm looking for a hat and some ax pieces. And that's exactly what we've got here. We've got the, uh, the ax head, we've got the little pole which I felt through the bag, and then the large hat piece. So here we have Apocalypseburg Abe, and he is a super cool minifigure. Really, really nice printing, great example. Uh, we've got the axe here with this really nice axe head, and then a standard pole piece. I'm gonna just move this out of the way for the moment. And then we've got some awesome printing. We've got these black legs on here, but look at the printing on the front here, really nice. Got the uh, skull on there, got this sash hanging down, and then look at that torso printing, it's awesome. So we've got a couple of cylinders here, then we've got a kind of metallic chromed uh, minifigure head, we've got a belt on there and you can see the shirt is slightly open. If we turn him around, some more really really nice printing on the back there, we've got the Abraham Lincoln top hat, a couple of these hatchets, and then even some uh, some metallic detailing along the belt, that's just so cool. We've got some printing on the arms here, and some metallic printing on the other cuff. It's just really, really good quality minifigure. Then look at that helmet piece, or the hat piece. It's one piece molded with the hair hanging down. Got these goggles on there. If we take that off, we can take a better look at the expression. It does look like Abraham Lincoln with the kind of lined, rather tired face. And then around the back, Abe is rather more angry. I think that would look rather cool. Yes, it does, but I'm gonna have to put it back on the right way round. And that is the super cool Apocalypse. Apocalypseburg Abe. Bag number 19 was another Dorothy and Toto, so we're moving on to bag number 20. And to be honest, my fingers are starting to get sore, but we'll carry on nonetheless. We have, let's have a feel. So that's a base plate. We've got a pair of legs, there's a head. That is, that's a torso piece. Okay, we've got some hair. Oh, that's interesting. So definitely some headgear, quite square. Could be a helmet, could be some hair, but then we've got a stick thing. So let's let's have a look at this. Got a stick, and it's got something on the end there. That, yeah, that's gonna be a golf club. So I kind of suspected with this hair piece, that feels like Lord Business's or President Business's hair, and this is gonna be his golf club. So this is gonna be Gone Golfing President Business, which is not easy to say. So let's cut this open and see what we've got inside. We should see President Business in a golf outfit. And yes, we do. Yep, there's the sweater. And then, more interestingly, we're gonna see the, where did it go? Hang on, still in the bag. Doo -doo -doo. Yes, this is the piece you wanna feel for. This is President Business's golf club.
So this is gone golfing president business and he's clearly enjoying retirement. He's clutching this golf club here. I don't recall ever seeing a Lego golf club so that might be new or I might be completely wrong. Let's take that out of the way. It's actually a quite a nice element. Um, yeah, very nicely detailed, uh, very nicely molded. Then we've got a really nice print here for President Business. We've got these pants which are dual molded in the dark green and the beige color. He's got a white hand here because you tend to only wear one golfing glove. And uh, yeah, that's not coming off. Good, good, good. Uh, really nice print on the front here. I guess we've got some uh, golfing pants or maybe shorts and then a belt across the waistband here. He's got this uh, checkered golf sweater and a shirt underneath and then the checker pattern on the side and we do have dual molded arms there i guess this is going to be kind of a, a vest jumper and we can see the shirt sticking through just there really nice facial expression obviously very happy and around the back a little bit more sheepish but not nearly the evil president business that we know from the lego movie part one we have this fantastic hairpiece, uh, very blocky and then the gray bits around the side here showing his age but that is gone golfing president business we are up to bag 21 so let's see what we've got we've got a base plate uh what's that that is a one by two so we've got a tile in there that's going to help us torso piece uh the leaflet and then oh that's interesting okay so we have i don't know whether you can see this it's kind of like a it's almost round but it's a fluted element texture here is very very important that is going to be a hula skirt or a, a kind of fluted skirt and that can only belong to candy wrapper so let's open this up we should see a pink uh kind of singing star and yes this is the piece i was looking for or the piece i was feeling very very nicely decorated skirt piece and it's very very distinctive inside the packaging um what else have we got here you can also feel out for a microphone there is a microphone down there and then this is the one by two which is a cassette tape one thing I need to show you is how the head became lodged within the hair inside the packet. This happens quite often and sometimes it can make it difficult to feel out these hair pieces. But uh, yeah, do watch out for that. So this is Candy Wrapper and I love the play on words in the name. This is also a very cool looking minifigure. I do like the uh, transparent tile there with the cassette tape. And then it, this is a super nice skirt element. I love the decoration on here. And you can actually see there are some uh, silver metallic stars on there. The legs themselves are dual molded. We've got some pink and white and then just some basic printing on the front there with this kind of yellow detail and the pink boots. And then the torso piece, if we take this out of the way, yeah, that's uh, striped like candy. And then we've got some nice metallic stars on there. We've got another one of these pink and silver microphones, just like the one Wild Style had. And you can see the arms there with these pink gloves around the back. I'm gonna have to pop the hair. There we go. We do have a another stretch of stars there in this silver metallic color which looks really cool and you can see we've got a different expression on the back there. I love the kind of pink rouge or makeup on the face there and around the front she's got this really cute little winky face which looks great. The hair is also a really awesome element. So let's see we have there is actually a streak in there. You can see the streak in the hair. And then we've got silver stars printed in the pink hair. She just looks great. She almost looks like uh, Katy Perry. I think that's the artist I'm looking for. Bag 22, let's see what we've got here. Now this feels slightly different. I'm pretty sure we've got one of these internal clear bags here. So everything seems to be in the same place. Let's have a feel around, see what we can find. We have a base plate there. Oh, now that's interesting. Right, let's have a look at this. So we have a round tile. Yeah, you can see it round through the bag. There is only one minifig in this collection who has one of these round tiles. I think this is gonna be Hula Lula. Um, I don't remember her from the movie, but she's another one of these singers. So let's open this up and see what we've got inside. I'm gonna be looking for a round piece that is shaped like a record. Here's all the solid pieces. And yes, that is the piece I was feeling for. This is definitely Hula Lula. So let's get her built and take a look. 
So this is Hula Lula, and I've got to confess I don't remember her from the Lego movie, but she's a really cool looking character. She's got one of these pink microphones again, and then this uh, printed record piece which I felt out in the bag. Now let's have a look at those legs. Those are completely yellow with a little bit of printing on the feet, just for the, uh, I guess she'd be wearing sandals. <coughs> and there is actually a little bit of printing under there just to uh, help with modesty. And then on top, we've got this kind of uh, flowery top, complete with a, what do you call that, a lau? Um, one of these uh, flowery things that a hula girl would wear. And really nice flower printing there on the back. The hair is awesome bright green and then with this pink stripe i wonder if she is part of the everything is awesome uh band i can't give away any spoilers i really can't it's tempting but i'm not going to really nice facial expression on the back there and then with the lips parted she looks like she's kind of singing there and she would and that is um that's hula lula so let's see what we're going to get in bag number 23. okay so leaflets what have we got down here? Uh, oh, there's a microphone. So this might be another duplicate, but what's that? Oh, right, okay. So we've got some kind of star-shaped thing with a stick coming out of it. This is going to be a guitar. This is going to be Kitty Pop. Let's take a look. Another one of our performing artists. I can't remember where these came into the movie. I'm going to go see the Lego movie too again because I really enjoyed it first time around. And yes, that is indeed Kitty Pop. There you can see the guitar that was feeling from outside of the packet. So this is Kitty Pop and there is the guitar we were feeling from outside of the bag. This is a really nice piece of molded Lego and has lots of detailing on it. You can see some detail there for the strings in metallics and also for the whammy bar. And there are some raised sections here. It feels really good, really like an electric guitar. Now we have some interesting colors here. This kind of pinky peach color, I think is a new Lego color. I did see some Lego bricks in this exact color in the base of the Apocalypseburg set and uh, they really caught my eye. Also catching my eye here is the tail. This is I think the same thing that we saw on the Cowardly Lion except in white instead of brown. Now we do have some dual molded legs with this kind of very pale minty blue and this kind of peachy pink colour. We then have printing on the sides for the legs and uh, yeah there's some print there which looks like an animal print which looks very cool. We've got the torso piece there with more of those animal prints and uh, then we've got this kind of section here on the front almost looks like a pussycat with the white chest and then we've got some dual molded arms these yeah those are kind of like a minty blue colored uh, hand i'm sure i've never seen them in that color before but uh, i could be wrong the hair is also in this kind of peachy pinky color with the mint colored ears and then we've got a couple of expressions there we've got this one with the whiskers and then she's got her eyes screwed up because she's naturally singing away now so let's put that back on i'm uh, getting way too overexcited here but that is the awesome kitty pop bag 24 was battle ready lucy bag 25 was scarecrow 26 uni kitty 27 candy wrapper and 28 swamp creature but now we're on to bag number 29 so let's have a feel around and see what we've got it's actually quite thin this package we've got a base plate there there's a head Oh, and then there's a cylinder piece. So that, that's actually thinner than the head. Okay, it might be a coffee cup. Let's have another feel around, see what we can find in here. There's a hair piece there. Now, if this is Awesome Remix Emmett, he's gonna have headphones on. I think I can feel the headphones. Yeah, we've got a coffee cup. This is gonna be Awesome Remix Emmett. And Emmett does listen to an awesome remix of Everything Is Awesome. So uh, yeah, very, uh, very well fitting to the movie. And hopefully we should see some orange. Yes, that is Emmett, absolutely. And what I felt in the bag was, where's it gone? Yeah. There it is. So this is Emmett's coffee cup. We also get one of those in Apocalypseburg. So this is awesome remix Emmett and the three key things you're looking for is this coffee cup, the one by two tile and this hair piece, which is different because you've got the headphones around the side. Now take a look at that one by two. That is very cool. He's got this MP3 player or I guess 
kind of an iPhone with awesome on it. Yeah, that is custom printed. And then we've got this really nice coffee cup. We've actually got a lip on there so you can sip from it. I've got a feeling this is a new element. I saw that first in Welcome to Apocalypseburg. Apart from that, he is a pretty standard Emmett print. Um, He's meant to be generic, so this is okay, but he is uh, kind of distressed, as you can see there, on the reflective stripes and also on the belt, and that's pretty much what you see with all of the LEGO Movie 2 Emmets. But we do have this really cool expression, which I'm sure is going to be unique to this particular minifigure. He's got his eyes shut, enjoying the music, and around the back, yeah, very big smile. And then we've got this dual molded hair piece here with the standard brown Emmett hair and the black headphones. Okay, so I guess this is confession time. I got through all 42 bags, identifying each one as I went. And after about bag 30 something, it became very clear that I did not have two sets here. For example, I've got three Dorothys, which is a nice thing to have. I've actually got four in total, but that really tells me one of two things. Either the guys in the toy store hadn't been totally honest and the box had been opened up and checked. I really don't think that's the case. Or maybe as I've read on other forums, some of these boxes don't contain three sets of 20. Either way, I've got a bit of a problem here. What I have managed to do is accumulate 19 out of the 20 minifigures, which is not bad. But I promise you guys a complete set and a complete set you're gonna get. It's too late to run back to the store now as they're closed, but first thing in the morning, I'm gonna go back there and feel out a Vest Friends Rex. Luckily for you guys, we have this magical thing called video editing. So let's fast forward through to tomorrow. So after a quick run to Target and about 20 minutes of feeling, I actually found two Rexes and here is one of them. This is the one we need to complete the set. Now what we're feeling for in this bag with Rex is this headgear. The headgear is very distinctive. It's a little bit like the Scarecrow's hat, but not as pointy and you can feel the hair on it. The other thing you're feeling for is a dinosaur and I'm just trying to find that now. It's, uh, it's quite distinctive. It feels like one of the small animals, but it only has two legs and you've got a kind of tail piece here. So this is the final thing we needed. This is Rex, and let's open it up and take a look. So just to recap, the things we're gonna be feeling for in this set are the hat, which looks a little bit or exactly like this. And the next thing is this really cool little dinosaur. Here's a closer look at the little Velociraptor. These are really easy to fill out in the bag because you've got this long tail and then you don't have four legs. You've just got this kind of, uh, I guess, two legs at the bottom there where it stands. Really cool color scheme here with the dark blue, the lighter blue highlights, and then you've got his face. Of course, I don't think dinosaurs really have faces, but really nice printing on there with the yellow eyes. And uh, yeah, these play a really cool role in the film. They talk to Rex, but we get subtitles because of course we don't understand dinosaur language. This is Vest friend Rex, who plays quite a pivotal role in the movie. Now he becomes very good friends with Emmett, but I'm not gonna give away too many spoilers here. Notice how his vest is very similar to the one that Emmett wears, but uh, again, no spoilers. He has these uh, arms here, which are yellow, because of course he's wearing a vest and his arms are on display. He's got cuffs there and the blue gloves, but uh, yeah, really nice printing on this. He's got these kind of brown pants, I guess. Yeah, they are brown. A little bit of printing down the side sides there and then he's got these steel toe cap boots on and he's a kind of really cool guy he's got this big spaceship and uh, really wants to help to save the world now this headgear is really cool it has a I guess this would be a fedora hat and then it's got a built-in wig <laughs> really good facial expression as well there he is uh, looking very happy and pleased with himself with the stubble and then around the back he's actually looking quite mean and from the back as well you can see the R on the back for R for Rex and I actually think this looks uh, very much like the kind of costume that the Lego agents minifigures used to wear very cool so finally together we have all 20 of the Lego movie 2 collectible minifigures in total I ended up buying 47 bags because I picked up a few extra of the Wizard of Oz characters when I went back to Target I ended up with the full set of 20 you see before you and I also have another full set of 20 which I'm going to keep sealed in fact, out of the original 42, I got two sets of 19. Both times I was missing Vest Friend Rex. So from personal experience and from what I've read on other forums, not all of these boxes contain three sets of 20. I've definitely heard from people who say that's true, but then I've heard from people who say that's not the case. And that was definitely not the case for me. 
But ultimately I got what I wanted, and I've got a few extras to sell on eBay. In fact, I've got more Dorothys than I know what to do with. So that was a complete set of 20 LEGO Movie 2 collectible blind bags. If you made it this far, then I salute you. As you'd expect with any LEGO Movie, there are a lot of minifigures running around. So we definitely have some A-listers in here, some less well-known characters, and some that were included to drive up sales. The Wizard of Oz characters are among my favourites, and to be fair, they did play a part in the movie. Out of those, I think the Tin Man is my most favourite of all. But aside from The Wizard of Oz, I really like Gone Golfing President Business, Apocalypse Berg Abe, and my most favourite of the mainstream characters is Flashback Lucy. I really hope you enjoyed this LEGO Movie 2 collectible minifigure field guide and review video. If you did, please don't forget to drop me a like and feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. You'll find more blind bag feeling videos on my channel and I'm going to put a link to those at the end of the video. So I know this has been a long one, thanks for sticking around, stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.